Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stream and Hub Radio. I'm Sage Stevens, the host of Shout Out with Sage. And today, one of my guests is a musician, multi instrumentalist. He's a composer, an orchestrator. He's working with the new wave 80s band, Culture Club, if any of us remember. <laughs> and I want to welcome to the show John Kaner. Hi, John. How are you today? Hi, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you again for having me. And I just want to say it was such a pleasure to listen to Stephen talking about his inventions and his stories about Stevie Wonder and Brian Johnson. What right. a pleasure. And I have to get myself a pair of in-ears. Yes, I, I'm glad that you caught the end of that interview because, as I said, I interview musicians all the time and and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people like yourself aren't aware or familiar with the with the great technology that he's invented. Steve, for those of you just tuning in, we're talking to Stephen Ambrose, who was uh, just on before John, and he is the inventor of an in-ear monitor system. And a lot of people, a lot of musicians, lose their hearing. So it's a great it's a great thing that he's invented. I had no idea of the restorative power of his newer version. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. So I can't believe that. Yeah. I didn't know that so many people lost musicians lost their hearing. I mean, it does make sense because you're, you have all that sound all the time and you're wearing the things in your ears and stuff. So it does make sense. So what about you? How did you get into music? Well, my love of music stems from my early childhood. I had parents who were in love with music, everything from orchestral compositions to rock music turned up to 11 <laughs> and uh, everything in between. I have a lot of experience in playing jazz. Um, I played in a classical ensemble of contemporary music and uh, I have a love for just the notes themselves, harmony, music mm. chords and then the sounds that we use to make them mm. and what are some of some of the projects that you're working on right now well right now i'm in the middle of a few movies that have um, an orchestral score that is composed by me and my writing partner roy hay from culture club okay. and um, we also have a television show that we recently finished mm -hmm. that is, uh, for the BBC. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a real estate selling reality TV show. For like sort of like estate. a selling sunset. Yeah. You're familiar <laughs> with that kind of, uh, show. Yes. I love um, that show. <laughs> sounds like the apprentice meets succession. Uh, but, uh, we love it. And our friend PK husband of Dorit Kemsley from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Okay. He's the star. And uh, we're very excited about that. Okay. And um, I read that you did a uh, some music for an Apple TV. What was that? Yeah. Um, as well, a movie that we worked on with director Paul Boyd was released today actually on apple tv the movie is called we are gathered here today okay um yes we are so happy because it started off as a project that might need music for one scene and through the magic of our <laughs> uh, friend nico goldfar okay. that he was able to tell Danny Huston, the producer and star, hey, maybe a few more scenes with music. And once we just started getting the ball rolling, there was no way to stop it. The whole movie has music right. now that's just really emblematic of the deep emotion that you feel in experiencing right. loss and especially during the time of COVID. Right. So let's um, sort of delve into that a little bit. So the movie is about loss, correct? So when you're looking, do you look at the scenes 
and then compose from the scenes they give you? Are the scenes already edited? Like, how does how does all that work as a composer for a film or a TV show? Well, sometimes it's different, but in this case, we got the movie in advance and we were able to watch the whole movie mm -hmm. with no music. And okay. sometimes you might get temp music that comes in before to show what the director is visualizing, right. but what they, they sent us the a few classical pieces. Is, right? Sorry? If, to give you like a tone and, and feel of what they're going for, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So they want us to hear what they want. If they don't know how to write music, how are they supposed to express what they want specifically? Right. So they just sent us a few iconic classical pieces and said, uh, we really love the emotion behind these. Can you capture that? And okay. in combination with watching the movie, we're able to feel what's necessary. And from my perspective, I really resonate with organic instruments, piano, anything orchestral, acoustic guitar. So. To be what's able your to mostly what's your, sorry? What's, sorry, what's your favorite instrument? Of those, I would have to say the French horn. Just okay. if you think of the intro to Jurassic Park, just okay. that mellow brass sound is it can be scarce and uh, calling, or it can be epic and uh, signifying heroism. So okay. I happen to love that, but there's no French horn in this movie, sadly. <laughs> okay. But I was very excited to sink my teeth into something that was expressing these emotions through that palette, creating okay. that sound of people losing someone through a video camera that's an right. inorganic experience through organic sounds. Just to give people a little, um, a little information, I did watch the trailer that you sent me. So uh, we are gathered here today. The the movie that that John composed for it's about someone that was in the hospital and they're they're on their deathbed and because of COVID, no one can visit them. Correct? I, I did get yeah. that right. Right. So okay. So so everyone's like it's a Zoom call basically. Correct. Yeah, the whole yeah. movie is basically a Zoom call, but it's filmed with professional cameras and lighting right, and right, right, right. professionally mixed. Right, exactly. And how did that opportunity come to you? Um, well, like anything in Hollywood, friends <laughs> of friends, um, Roy and Paul have uh, recently met through a mutual friend mm -hmm. and Paul was a music director or music video director and through our experiences of being first of all he's a culture club fan okay, so well, being able sorry. to work with him was you know kind of a dream mm -hmm. and secondly we as as the band culture club me and Roy as well orchestrated a song that Boy George sang. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the theme of the movie and the end credit uh, song for the film. Okay, amazing. And why did you get into music? Like, I know you mentioned that your parents and stuff, but was it just something you had to do? Like, it was like deep within you wanting to get out? Was there anything else that appealed to you other than music? I mean, a combination of everything, especially other things appealing to me, but I recognized an innate ability to understand and hear um, not just music theory, but to hear a small shaker in the background of a giant orchestral <laughs> thing. And there's one small thing happening in the background and nobody hears it or somebody drops a piece of paper and I might be able to notice it and nobody else in the room can. So right. after a few experiences like that, I kind of got the hint, maybe let's invest all our time and effort into making this our number one priority. I could make, make a career out of this. Okay, great. And what advice would you give someone who wants to 
um, have a career like as a composer in film or or in movies or something like that? Well, to have a job in film and in media composition is different than, you know, what I do. I am a huge fan of John Williams. And once he said this quote, and I feel like I live by that motto. <laughs> and it's don't strive to be a great film composer strive to be a great composer right you know try to write great music don't try to get jobs writing for movies and tv you know i recently was contacted by a few people who'd heard my music independently and said we could tell it was you right. so can you help us out with something and I felt so uh, complimented that they recognized my yeah, specific your, sound. Right. And um, what is your sound? Like, is there a certain, like, how would you describe it? Um, I would say a combination of all over the place and just <laughs> the right thing. <laughs> all over the place and... Then you... you know exactly what you want and just a little bit more <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't know if that's uh, uh helpful or not but uh, so do you have an agent or a manager and if so did did you get that right away or did you work a little bit and then eventually got got those things or well um i have an independent manager um through Nico Network is Nico Goldfar. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, I'm in a tight circle with Roy. We have our organization called Hammer Sound Studios. And through that, we really cultivate our scoring um, for television and movies outside of any kind of band stuff. So, uh, I, you know, I'm very lucky to be in a position where Roy and I are partners in writing and working on things like uh, work from working with songwriters to working on movies to working on their own songs to making an opening for their show. Uh, they have a show tomorrow in Costa Mesa, and I'm oh, excited awesome. to go and see that orchestral opening played again in the Costa Mesa Amphitheater. That's... So there's all sorts of different opportunities that we do together, but uh, mm. I'm very grateful. Is there anyone you would like to give a shout out to since this is shout out with Sage? Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Roy and to George and mm. to Mikey, the guys in Culture Club, and mm. especially to Nico Golfar our friend and collaborator. How did you get the opportunity with Culture Club? How did that come about? You know, that's just another case of when I look at it, they heard my sound and said, can we have a bit more of this? I'll have a bit of this and a bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> but Little like, did you meet, like, how did they find you? How did they? Somehow they stumbled upon my music and through friends and word of mouth, they said, hey, there's this kid who kind of sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> is what I heard, they said. <laughs> I see. And what inspires you when you do your music? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of places I draw inspiration from, but I think mostly... It's uh, the loss of my father really gives me a lot of emotional depth and understanding. Mm -hmm. I felt so much. And when I watch a scene, I resonate. I can sometimes come to tears and I just feel those emotions that they're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, he told me once that a good artist cannot be good without suffering. And it's so ironic that I feel like he gave me that ability. I do, so, I do, I do somewhat agree with that. I don't think that 
like as an actor or a musician or any type of creative, if you, if you haven't experienced some type of pain or loss, I mean, you need to experience things to, in order to express them. So, yeah, and especially channeling those things through positive outlets and venting them in a healthy way. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> like writing music. <laughs> right. Not to take your grief and your pain and, you know, maybe take a sledgehammer to a car. Probably not the best thing, right? Maybe but, a little bit. Well, I mean, I mean, if the car is like, you know, yours and you want to do that, hey, feel free. But, um, <laughs> For a reno, quick reno. Right, right. Is there any, um, is there anyone else you would like to give a shout out to? Um, maybe just to my family watching. Mm -hmm. Hey, love you guys. Your combined social medias. Right, and how do people find out about you? Do you have social media website? If, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you music. can definitely reach me individually at John Caner Music on every handle on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. Okay. And I'm working with Roy on a lot of projects and you can reach us both at hammersoundstudios.com. Oh, I have watched your TikTok videos. Those are fun. How, how do you... Um... How long does it take you to do one of those? So just to let everyone know. One of them? I mean, I grew well, explain up what you do first. Rock. Explain what you do first. And then and Yeah, then. for sure. I grew up listening to rock music, especially classic rock guitar players like Eddie Van Halen and Joe Perry yeah. from Aerosmith and Ace Fraley from Kiss. So I've internalized a lot of those songs, <laughs> Jimmy Page's solos, all sorts of stuff. And now, after having gone to music school and worked on classical things that have all, all the notes, they use all the notes, to use a few notes really fancy on a guitar for a guitar <laughs> solo, especially growing up playing guitar and now coming back to it after having not played guitar, I just like to give myself a morning challenge and say, hey, I heard this song that I know on the radio yesterday. Let's pick up the guitar, listen for 15 minutes, get the solo down and take it maybe two or three times and pick the best one and post it. And oh. I've just, you know, enjoyed it so much. I've been doing it every day for maybe two months, three months now. Yes, I've watched a few of them. They're, they're, they're really good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, lo I love the TikToks. So, okay. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we go today? Um, just, I'd love everybody check out. We are gathered here today now on Apple TV. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It was great having you and chatting with you. And thank you for having me. It was an honor. Oh, no worries. No worries. And, um, yeah, so we'll see you soon and I'll check out the rest of your movies and other things that you're up to in the near future. Yeah. Please have me back again. Okay. Thanks, John. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Shout Out with Sage Show. Shout Out with Sage. Shout me out. And that's all I got. So shout out and let's go.